Sequences in series seem like a real left turn from our study of functions, mainly in terms of integrals and derivatives. So now we're going to take these sequences in series and return them back to functions. Let's take a look at our Taylor polynomial process first. What does that do? I'm going to start with a function f of x. I'll assume I can take as many derivatives of f as I like. That's going to produce a sequence. So if I pick a point c, which we call the center, I can produce a sequence of numbers by taking the kth derivative of f, evaluate at c, and then divide by k factorial. And that gives us all our Taylor coefficients. Once I have the sequence, I can form a series. And then we have issues there, such as does it converge or diverge? And if it does converge, is it absolutely convergent, conditionally convergent, and whatnot? OK, so that's nice. But why don't we try going in the other direction now? Suppose somebody hands you a sequence and asks, can you make a function out of this? So the natural way you would make a function out of this would be, well, let f of x be equal to, OK, well, we have a0. A1, I'm going to put x to the 1 power. A2, I'll put x squared. A3, I'll put x cubed, and so on. So this is going to be a series where each value of this function is going to depend on whether you can evaluate your series or not. So this is what we're going to call a power series. OK, or if you want to center things at a point x, say c, then I can define power series centered at some point by just the same definition, replace your x with x minus c, and then you have your powers. It's the same idea. OK, let's take a look at an example just so this makes sense. We have a lot of things floating around. We have functions. We have sequences. We have series. Let's try to bring things a little bit down to earth. So I'm going to start with, all right, the sequence I'll start with will just be 1 over n squared. So the power series I'm going to form is going to look like this. And I'll start at 1 because we don't want to divide by 0. So I take x to the n over n squared. So if I write out the first few terms of this, we're looking at x plus x squared over 4 plus x cubed over 9, and so on. Now, to bring this down to earth, let's evaluate it at a few points just to convince ourselves this is not some abstract nonsense that we're doing. If I put a 0 into here, Note that we're just going to get 0 plus 0 plus 0, and so on. So f of 0 is going to be equal to 0 in this case. Okay, in general, f of 0 is going to be equal to your a0 for the sequence. If I put a 1 in here, well, that's going to just turn x into 1, and I'm going to have 1 plus a quarter plus a ninth, and so on. And so that's the famous value from 4a series pi squared over 6, which is roughly 1.645. If I put a minus 1 in here, then that's going to give me this alternating series, minus 1 to the n over n squared. And then you can go and I went to my computer to work this out, get minus 8.22. And so that's going to be our value at minus 1. So the idea here is you can actually go and compute this function at points. It's just that, you know, you're not going to have a nice close formula like you would say for, I don't know, polynomials. All right, but let's keep going. How about if we try f of 2? Well, if I try f of 2, it's going to be 2 plus 2 squared over 4 plus 2 cubed over 9, and so on and so on. What's going to happen is the series is going to diverge, meaning the function's not defined at 2. Why would that happen? Well, I take the limit of n going to infinity of 2 to the n over n squared. You can apply L'Hopital's rule to this twice, and that's going to give you a plus infinity. And note, we have our limit test for divergence, which says convergence series have to have the limit of the sequence going to 0. So if it's going to infinity, it's definitely not going to 0. So series diverges, and so our function's not defined. Similarly, if I put a minus 2 in there, we get not defined. This thing's not even going to go to plus infinity. It's just going to diverge. It's going to shoot off to plus infinity, but then it's going to bounce back and forth between large numbers as you go further and further out. So not equal to 0, so not defined here. In fact, you'll see if you try any x bigger than 1 or x less than minus 1, you're going to have the same problem. You're going to have some geometric sequence over your n squared, and 
if this thing's got absolute value bigger than one, there's no chance of this thing going to zero. So for these two regions here, our function's not gonna be defined. So we got a couple points and we kind of know where the domain is. The domain's gonna be trapped between at least minus one and one, and it may be smaller. We'll have to investigate further. So let's try the example. f of x equal to one plus x minus one plus x minus one squared, and so on. So here, our a sub k is always gonna be equal to one, and we're gonna be centered at x equal to one. Now, if we look at this, kind of stare at it, if you let r be equal to x minus one, this looks like one plus r plus r squared plus, and so on. It looks like a geometric series. So we can try to sum this series. What's gonna happen? It's gonna be one over one minus r, and our r is gonna be x minus one. So I can simplify this to one over two minus x. But there's gonna be a little catch here. Note that we only get convergence of this as a geometric series if the absolute value of r is strictly less than one. So we're gonna need absolute value of x minus one strictly less than one. Okay, the way you decode this, to get rid of those absolute value signs, I'm gonna leave the one on this side and then I have to put a minus one on the other side. Then, to clean things up, I wanna get rid of the minus one in the middle. So I'm gonna add one to everything and that's gonna give me zero less than x less than two. So that's where we'll get convergence of this as if we're only worrying about the geometric series properties. So let's take a look at the pictures. So if I take the graph of one over two minus x, okay, this looks pretty good. This is something we know how to do. We're gonna have a vertical asymptote at two, and then you can take your favorite method to figure out where it's increasing and decreasing. And if you take the limit as you go out to plus or minus infinity, this thing's gonna go to zero. So we're gonna have a horizontal asymptote on both ends of zero. So that's my picture. Once I go to this guy, it's not gonna be entirely the same as this because we're gonna have to throw away a lot of the domain. The only thing we're gonna have left is zero going to two. So I'll have zero going to two, and then we might say, well, can we at least get the zero back? If I check that, f of zero is gonna be one minus one plus one minus one, and as a series that's gonna diverge so for the function, it's not defined. So here's what happens. The only thing I'm gonna get for the domain of this guy here as a series is gonna be x between zero and two. And of course I can't have two because that's where the vertical asymptote is. Okay, this is gonna be a definition. Okay, the domain of a power series, which is what we're gonna call the interval of convergence. Three possibilities. You get x only, x equal to zero only. Okay, so that's if you're always gonna get at least zero because if I put zero into my series, the only thing that'll be left is the A zero term. So you're guaranteed to at least have that in there. Second case, gonna be all real numbers. That means no matter what you put in the series, you get a sensible answer out. So the series is always converging whenever you change x around. And then third case, which is the case we just saw here, you're gonna get a finite interval. The way the interval is gonna look, you're gonna have a center for your series, and then you're gonna have perfect symmetry about your center. You can go out by R or down by R in either direction, and this R is gonna be called the radius of convergence. If I'm in case one, we just say that R is equal to zero. If we're in case two, we'll call it plus infinity, and then in this third case, it's just gonna be some number. When I have this case, we'll always need to check your endpoints by hand. Sometimes you'll get convergence at the endpoints, sometimes you won't. So that's a little tricky. All right, in my example, the center was at one, so I'll mark off a one, and then we knew that our interval of convergence was going from zero to two, not including the endpoints. So the radius of convergence is gonna be equal to one. That's just the distance you can go in each direction from our center. 